So, um, after the G Wagon, which was impressive, I thought that was brilliant. The, um, there's this guy in the UK that does these crazy, wonderful projects. And uh, I thought, you know what, I wouldn't mind checking out this DIY fiber rocket. Now, um, I see a lot of rocket things and that sort of stuff. I've never seen one done from carbon fiber, so that's what's got me curious. Um, because carbon fiber is a material that I would immediately associate with rockets. So I thought we'd check it out. The biggest rocket I've ever made and launched it into the sky. It's made oh from carbon God. fiber and is quite a beast. I wanted to see how big I could currently build a rocket. And I also wanted to get back some onboard video as recently I've had a few problems with getting cameras back. Most rockets are made from plumbing parts. This video was sponsored by Omshape. Over a year ago, I built a two-stage rocket, which was a great success, but unfortunately the craft wow. returned to Earth, minus the camera, which was a little disappointing. Uh, has it gone? No! The next rocket I built had a more securely installed camera, but not everything went to plan this time either, with the rocket flying far out of sight on the first launch. Wow, Essentially what's happened really is good it's at gone. Making rockets. My friends and I desperately searched high and low for any sign of it. But in the end, with a heavy heart, defeat was declared and we decided we'd just go to the pub instead. That brave little rocket was out there somewhere, seemingly lost forever, until one of my friends, George, this is George, did some sums to calculate where the landing site must be, and actually managed to track it down a few days later. You are joking. Oh, no way. Oh my well, goodness. Done, However, due to a major cock-up on my part, despite all of this I still didn't get any onboard video. I might have forgotten to put the SD card in this camera. Oh. I did say in the end of that video though Good if thing. this video gets 15,000 likes and I will fly the X1 again and try and get some great onboard footage. So I... Yeah check out his shower guys he's done some really really cool things. Um, he's done he does quite a lot of the, like different variations of airplane and things like that. He also he's been trying to do like a land speed record for RC cars so you do some really cool stuff. I'll put a link to this video as always in the description and a link to his channel below as well. I keep my promise, right? In an attempt to rectify the major cock-up by actually remembering to put the memory card in the camera this time, I took what I'd learned from the first flight and rebuilt the rocket with some improvements, such as a more aerodynamically optimized nose and a streamer rather than a parachute, which would make sure that the vehicle didn't float too far away this time. A streamer works much like a parachute in that its drag slows the falling vehicle down. Now, the main thing, for all those wondering, why don't you just stick a tracker in it, James, so I can better find the rocket next time? I still didn't put a tracker in this rocket and as GPS trackers are generally too big, while Bluetooth trackers that I've tried before are basically useless due to their tiny range. What about Apple? With the mods done, I could now Pop go out thing. and fly this rocket again, after checking about 10 times to make sure there was an SD card in it, of course. Three, two, one. Jesus. Whoa. There's the deployment. That makes a change. <laughs> Despite keeping my eyes on it all the way to the streamer ejection at the highest point of the flight, I somehow managed to lose sight of the bright orange rocket yet again on its return to Earth, as I briefly looked down at my camera. Oh, damn, I've lost it. I don't know how I managed to do this in the UK. Well, once again, the rocket has, uh, has been lost. <laughs> this time, I was determined to find this rocket at any cost, so I searched for three hours scanning field after field, even almost losing my scout drone to a rogue snow shower that appeared out of nowhere because, you know, the UK weather is a bit weird, isn't it? Eventually, I saw an orange shape near a stone wall, which was a huge relief. Yay! <laughs> now I could finally watch that footage. So this is what that looked like. Oh, come on. Wow, that is insane. Wow. So that was a big success. I got some great onboard video and basically flew this rocket to the limit of how high you can go in the UK with a mid-power motor that you can just get online. However, Jesus. this whole experience got me thinking maybe it was time to stop aiming to build higher and faster rockets and go bigger instead. Let's see how big I could build what a, a mid-power rocket while carrying multiple cameras. No, it's impressive what you can do. It really is. I started designing the new rocket on my computer with Onshape. Most model rockets I've made before, like the two-stage rocket, are basically just made from paper. You can buy special cardboard tubes for model rockets, and they're pretty easy to work with. Getting into larger and more powerful oh, rockets, right. however, requires stronger materials, so I decided to base this rocket around this huge carbon fiber tube, as it's super strong and very light. This tube would need some custom parts to connect together, though. This was easy, as I could take measurements from the components I was going to be 
you're using, such as the motor and the inner diameter of the carbon tube, and then CAD up accurate virtual parts that could be printed out later on. So I've been cracking on with the design on Onshape over here, and uh, yeah, using the assembly feature to mock everything up, make it into the full rocket, put all the components together, see how they all fit. I could design symmetrical parts like the nose cone from scratch using a revolve feature on Onshape and then test print them using my 3D printers. As this all looked good and I was happy with the fit of all of the test printed parts that I'd already made, I laser cut the fuselage bulkheads and the fins for the rocket from 6mm plywood. Laser cutters are really handy for quickly taking flat shapes from the computer and cutting them That's out cool. from sheet material like this. To attach the fins I simply epoxied them to the outside of the tube which might have been a mistake in hindsight. I thought that smearing big epoxy fillets would make them strong enough, but you'll see how well the fins lasted later. I made sure to line them up with these custom laser cut guides which helped to get them relatively straight. Unlike with the orange rocket, this much larger and heavier rocket was going to fly quite slowly with the same power from a similar motor. So it didn't matter okay. as much if these fins were a few fractions of a millimeter off here or there. Next I started printing some hardware for the rocket such as the motor retainer, which is just a thread and a threaded cap that stops the motor from ejecting right. itself. I stole some launch buttons from the orange rocket and these are just things that fit into the aluminium extrusion rail that's attached to the launch pad. So how was the rocket going to return safely to the earth? Well it was going to need some parachutes and a strong... The, yeah the amount of stuff this guy knows is pretty impressive. I mean he does so many different things I didn't even know he knew about rockets so I'm very impressed shock cord that ties the parachutes to the rocket. This shock cord had to be really securely mounted to the carbon tube as it's pretty heavy and there'd be a lot of force going through this. So I drilled holes for a U-clamp taking much care to vacuum up all of the dangerous carbon dust. Next up it was time to make some camera mounts. I mounted this tiny Insta360 camera on an arm, epoxied and screwed down low to get a good view of the flames from the motor. To offset the drag and the mass of this camera I made a dummy camera which would go on the other side to cancel out the effects. A big thanks to my Patreons by the way for providing me with the funds to get myself new cameras like this one and yeah as a thanks then names are listed on the side of this rocket so that they can go along for the ride. So how far off was That's I from cool. launching this thing? Well first of all I needed to catch a break with the weather. At the moment it's not looking good but hopefully by next week things will have cheered up a bit. This is really why the UK doesn't have a space program. While I waited for winter yeah. to end I did a bit more CAD to improve my launch system so maybe this is a good time to tell you about the sponsor of today's video on shape as they've really helped to make this video possible in more ways is to support my channel is to support my sponsors so make sure to check, go out, and check it out your business can try really on shape for free at onshape.pro forward slash all right let's see if we can get this rocket channel. off the launch pad as mentioned while losing the will to live with the weather i worked on improving my launch system to make it safer and more reliable to use specifically i decided i wasn't a fan of the remote ignition system i came up with last time despite the previous setup using multiple fail safes it wasn't foolproof. A hard connection where I could power on the system at a good distance would make more sense here. So I bought a 50 meter mains extension lead and cut off the plug so I could solder some connectors to it. One end goes to the electronic igniter and the other end to my launch controller where you plug in the launch battery, arm oh, the circuit right, and okay. flick this switch to fire. Super simple. I made sure to test it out with a small igniter outside. While I was wrapping all of this up the weather looked like it would briefly become much better for a launch attempt at the weekend. So I hurriedly got everything together and then dragged along two of my friends to see if we could get this huge rocket into the sky. How does it feel to be an assistant? This is horrible. <laughs> I feel really nervous. <laughs> Why? What about the rocket launching? No, about being on camera. Oh. <laughs> this is the time delay and uh, basically I'm setting how long uh, I want there to be a delay before the parachute comes out. So I'm just drilling into this powder on the end and that means that the flames will go and burn through into the ejection charge a bit sooner. However, as I got my stuff ready, to my huge annoyance, I realised there was a huge problem with one of the pieces of launch equipment. I'm connecting launch rail. Yeah, I had two of my friends here who were all ready to go. Um, we were all excited to see the rocket launch, but unfortunately, as we were setting up the launch rail, I realised that this 3D printed part that I was using to connect the two uh, one metre long launch rail sections together was not strong enough. So my flatmate Sam and I tried to quickly hack together an aluminium version of this 3D printed bracket, but alas, 
it wasn't strong enough and we had to just scrub the launch because using one length of this launch rail here is just not enough for a two meter long rocket. Learning my oh, lesson, right, okay. over the next week I rebuilt the launch rail to be far stronger to take the three kilogram mass of the 2.4 meter tall rocket without wobbling about all over the place. Now it was ready for launch attempt number two. Okay, finally the weather is looking That's a bit huge. better. This time Hannah and Sam decided not to bother getting up you early for right. a launch that might not actually happen, which was fair enough I suppose. I so instead Mike offered to lend a hand. I set up the cameras and Got prepped the launch pad. The cameras on here. So, would my huge carbon rocket work? Would the fins fall off? Would the parachute so Would the cameras record? Time to find out. Mike's going to launch the rocket. It's his first time. This is uh, going to be one hell really of a cool launch. This. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I'm going to get in position. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Nice. Woo. Oh my god. Oh, that's well cool. He was right, it's a, it was a slower ascent. And he goes high, it looks really good. Oh no. Oh. Oi! Whoa! <laughs> what, a, what a landing! <laughs> nice. Oh, that was, that was terrible. He's really good at practice. <laughs> that was great. It went just to fly. Yeah. That was absolutely awesome. Pretty, pretty good launch, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, very good. Yeah, I think the parachute could have come out a little bit sooner, but uh, and yeah. Easy to find the rocket this time. Yeah, much easier to find than the uh, the orange one. Oh, we got a bit of damage. And he found it straight away. Nice. So uh, it's a little bit warm. So the uh, two of the fingers. Yeah, that was fell really off, impressive. But, uh, that's all right, we can learn from that. So this was one thing I knew I needed to fix for the future, as getting the rocket back in several pieces can't really be considered a complete success. Thanks to OneShape though, I could access their mobile version of the software and make some notes about how to improve the design. Perhaps next time I could design a 3D printed fin can that the fins could be bolted to, which would help their survivability upon landing. I like that parachute. Yeah, that parachute's pretty good, isn't it? I think it slowed it down enough. It did slow it down, because yeah. it wants this nose diving to begin with. Yeah, yeah. But it took it took a while for them to inflate, didn't it? Yeah, they literally it was like it was a like base jump, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right before the end. <laughs> right before the end. I was worried that the camera was missing, but the fake camera is missing. The real one is still recording. Is it still recording? Yay. It's blue. Yay. Successful recovery of the cameras, finally. <laughs> Time to take a detailed review of what happened. All right, let's see what the onboard footage was like. We can see from this angle that the vehicle stayed oh, very well stable cool. on its ascent up to what looks like the predicted altitude of 75 meters, only rolling about 360 degrees before the parachute ejection. It took a few nerve-wracking seconds for the chutes to inflate and finally That's destroy impressive. the rocket just before touchdown. In total, the flight lasted just 12.5 seconds, but yeah, we got some great video, which was the aim, and now I've succeeded in setting a new personal record for the largest rocket I've built and flown so far. Ooh, let's try again. That looks cool. Woo! If you enjoyed this video, then maybe you can check out another video on my channel, maybe Dude. like this one over here. And thank you very much again to Onshape for making this rocket build possible. More projects like this to come, I think. I'll see you. Yeah, check out his, uh, if you want me to check out his uh, other video, uh, let me know. But it's actually really good. He does this, like, solar flying plane, which is really cool. Um, but, yeah, I didn't know he's, he knew all about stuff about rockets as well. I mean, this guy is well good. Like I said, guys, uh, check out the, um, check out his video below without me if you want. And also, I'll put a link to his channel. He's got a really good channel. Strongly recommend you go and check him out because he's really, really decent. So, uh, yeah. Let's see if we can find the next video.